HTMX lets our web app talk to the server without using any JavaScript. It simplifies this fetch call in JavaScript all the way down to a simple expression in HTML. Tailwind is going to allow us to simplify all the CSS code into an inline HTML styles. Using HTMX and Tailwind CSS, we'll be able to build this web app without using any JavaScript or any CSS file. Only our Python Fest API backend and HTML. Let's see it in action. Let's get it to tell a joke about HTMX versus JS. Here we go. To make this web app working, all we need is 40 lines of HTML and 40 lines of Python code. All we need for this project is the script for, is for the CDN from HTMX's website, Tailwind CDN from Tailwind's website, and the auto size min.js from CDN.js, so that we'll have a resizing input text area. And we create our body element with tailwind styling, height and width set to full, with padding and margin set to zero, and a background color of gray. This number right here determines the intensity. And then we have a main container div with a flex layout as high as the screen. This is 100 VH in CSS terms and with justify center set. Then we have a chat box div with gray background, flex set to column, covering two fifths of the width of the screen with bottom and top margin set to 10. These units are special to Tailwind and all the styles that come with Tailwind are pre-configured to just give you the best possible look without having to go through detailed CSS adjustments. I will have the code available at my Patreon along with 100 plus other project files, including testing GPT's context compare, building a full stack GPT web app, open AI function calling with streaming responses and more. Link is in the description. I set the body elements back around the blue, you can see that in the chat box is stretching two fifths of the width and bottom and top margin set to 10. And it is uh, a flex box as you see. And then we have our messages div, which takes up the space that is right above our form, which then follows right here, which actually does our post requests using HTMX, targets the messages div right here, and it appends the HTML we're going to receive from the server before the end of this messages div. You can read more about the trigger, target, and swap options at HTMX's website. Our text area is again styled with tailwind and our button as well right here. And we are only using a single line of JavaScript to initiate the auto size plugin or script which we have imported to the message input element with the ID of message input element, which is the text area. As you see, get element by ID message input. If you're interested in learning more about how to build web apps using GPT API, then visit my EchoHive AI Academy, echohive.live. I have 140 plus free coding videos, and you can search for whatever content that you're looking for and find the code download links as well, echohive.live. This line right here, HX post, is going to allow us to get the content of whatever is in the text area and send it directly to the Python and to be able to uh, send it to GPT and get a response and whatever is returned will be appended to HTML. Now let's take a look at our main.py. As you see, we only have two files. One is index.html in static folder and main.py file. We are defining our OpenAI API key from our environment variables. We are defining our app to be a fast API and we have a GPT call function which makes a call to GPT 3.5 turbo and returns the response. It takes in a messages parameter. And we are specifying the system message here in inside of a messages list. And he's just saying you're a helpful assistant. And then we are initiating our route. The API endpoint is new underscore chat, which is what this post request is going to connect to. Then we are defining our function, new chat, which awaits the result of the request that arrives from the HTMX from the front end. And then we get the data's message element. And then we append to the user that message and then we send back with html response a div which includes that message which then gets appended to right here as you, as you see this high arrives at this function and then gets turned into a div an html element and is sent back as html response as i in this case being the message element and then it gets appended to the dot messages div however as you see when we are returning the div we are actually making another get request to GPT underscore response, which is our next, which is going to be our next API endpoint. We are again targeting the messages div and we are placing, we're going to place the returned value to before end 
and we are setting the HX trigger to load so that when this div is returned and placed in HTML, then it automatically triggers the call to GPT underscore response, which is going to make the call to GPT and return its response, which then brings us to our next function. As soon as this message element is placed in HTML, it makes this HTMX get call, get request to GPT underscore response, which essentially makes our GPT call with the messages. And then we append the assistance message, which we receive. And then we simply return another div with the assistant message, which is going to be appended to the messages div before the end. And this is how we see, hello, how can I assist you today appearing? So if I zoom out, as you see, this is all there is to it. We have two API endpoints. The form, when submitted, comes to the new chat API endpoint. And if we are creating a new HTML div and sending it back with the message in it, we're making another get request to trigger this GPT response to get the assistance message. And when we do that, we are creating another div and sending it with HTML response. And all of these are appearing in our web app dynamically. And then we are just mounting the static files. And this is just to run the file uh, by, by, by pressing the play button or debugging. Otherwise, you would run this with the uh, unicorn command. If you were to ask, what is HTMX in one sentence? Then we get a response, HTMX is a JavaScript library that enables simplified and efficient creation of dynamic web applications by adding interactivity through standard HTML attributes. As you see, this message, when the sub click, the sub button, send button was clicked, triggered the new chat API endpoint, which then generated this div, appended it right here, and then that itself on load triggered the GPT response, which allowed us to make a call to GPT and return another div with the assistant response, which then allowed it to appear right here. Normally, you will start your app by using unicorn main app dash reload. Command line call, and it will start your server, local server right here. And you can actually copy paste this or control click it, and it will open up your uh, app. Here, main is the name of your file, and app is what you have defined as your fast API app right here dash reload allows you so that if you make any changes to your main.py file this web app automatically reloads to reflect the changes if you like to watch any of my other videos and find the code download links visit echohive.live you can search all my videos here or just browse and watch any other ones that you like such as gpt function calling or the autocoder videos or about lang chain